We use a ranked by serial coefficient to measure how strongly two variables are associated. One, one of them is continuous, the other one is a dichotomous variable with underlying continuity. So what is a dichotomous variable with underlying continuity? One example is if you have a class in which student can get scores anywhere from 0 to 100, but instructor at the end of the semester decided, OK, anyone who gets score over 60 has passed, and those who get scores lower than 60 is graded as fail. So in this case, even though the score itself is a continuous measure, the grade is pre presented as pass versus fail. So this example of uh, you know a dichotomous variable with underlying continuity. Since SPSS doesn't offer you the option to um, get a rank by serial coefficient, so let's learn how to get this measure using Excel. The data set I presented here is from page 163 of the textbook. So you can see here uh, we have 16 participants in the study. They are a graduate student who either failed or passed their comprehensive exams. So we want to find out whether their performance on the comprehensive exam has anything to do with their cumulative GPA in the program. This is the formula we use to um, calculate the rank by serial coefficient. First, you want to know that uh, the entire sample is divided into a group P versus, uh, versus a group Q based on the two values of the dichotomous variable. That's how we come up with the two subscript used in this formula. In our example, group P is those who failed the comprehensive exam, and group Q is the student who actually passed the comprehensive exam. So the P here has nothing to do with the pass in our data set. It's a little bit confusing, but uh, just keep in mind we always use P and Q. It doesn't matter how you label your uh, values for the dichotomous variable in your particular question. The other variable we have here is the GPA, that the continuous measure. Okay, so XP bar is, is the average GPA of students who fail the comprehensive exam, and XQ bar is the average of GPA of students who pass the comprehensive exam. That's how you calculate those two values. So now I'm going to take my values away and start from beginning to show you how I got my uh, rank by serial correlation coefficient here. Um, I put down xp bar right here, which equals the average of the GPA for student who failed the comprehensive exam. And xq bar is the average of GPA of student who passed the comprehensive exam. The PP and PQ we have in the formula, they are uh, relatively simple. They represent the proportions of group P and group Q relative to the entire sample size. So in our case, PP, since we have five students in group, in group P, and what's the proportion? It's five out of the sample size 16. Similarly, for um, group two or the Q group, the sample size is 11, and the PQ is 11 over 16. So P and Q, if you add them together, 
they always add up to one. The next value is the SX. This represents the standard deviation of the continuous variable in this study. So to find out the standard deviation of GPA, we need to use the built-in function that tells you the standard deviation. We use the standard deviation dot s because we are working with a sample. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. We highlight the entire list of 16 GPAs, and this is the standard deviation of GPA. Now, the only value that we don't know is this y value. That's actually the ordinate. And this concept is a little bit tricky. And let me just go through this particular concept using a normal curve I put down here. First, you need to understand, even though we're working with a dicoms variable, this variable has underlying continuity. Assume that we could get all the students' scores on their comprehensive exam, not only pass or fail, their scores. Okay. If we plot the distribution of the scores, the frequency of the scores into this particular into a, a distribution, we would end up a normal curve. So most of the scores cluster to the average. Some are very low, some are very high. Now we're interested in the point at which the cutoff took place. So we want to know at exactly which point the uh, student was said, okay, below this point, you're going to fail. Uh, 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 higher than this point, you're going to pass. There are two different ways to identify the uh, cutoff point. One way is uh, shown in the book. To use that particular method, you need to have a normal distribution table. So we are going to use table B.1 on page 235. And we need the information of those two numbers, those the two proportions. In our example, the P is the lower side. It has a value of 0 0.3125 which happened to be smaller than a Q sign. So look under the column that's labeled the smaller area and go down to find out the value that is 0 0.31, close to 0 0.3125. Well, we don't really have a 0 0.3125, but we have two numbers that is very close to this number. One is 0 0.3121, the other, one, the other one is 0 0.3156. So we know we are looking for a value that has a z-score somewhere between 0.48 and 0.49. At this point, we need to really understand that the P and Qs, the P, P, and P, Qs, they represent the areas under the curve. That's why they add up to uh, 1. The Z scores, on the other hand, they are always marked on this horizontal line. So we know the cutoff point have a z-score value that's very close to 0.49. This is a point that we are looking for. And the y value, the y value in that particular formula, I call this ornate, that's the height of the normal curve right at this z-score we find. If you look at the table B.1, the last column labeled as Y, that's the ordinate. You still at the same place where you find your 0.3125 or very close to that point, you will end up with a Y or the ordinate value that is 0.3538. I'm looking at a line that has a Z score of 0.49. The second way to get this ordinate value is to use functions in Excel. 
So first, I want to find out what is a z-score that separates this p from the q area. So this function is um, called norms nth. Okay, you need to give a probability. p is a probability we're going to use. And this function return a z value that's very close, again, very close to 0.49. And once we get the z score here, we know that we need to find the height of this ordinate at z equals 0.48878. So here is the ordinate value we're going to look for. And this will need another function in Excel. That is, once you have a normal distribution, you know the z-score, what's the uh, density of that distribution? Well, what's the height of the um, ordinate going to return? So the z-score is the one we just found out. And we are not going to ask for the cumulative uh, density. So we're going to use the word false here. And look, here is the ordinate. Remember, the ordinate value we got from table B.1 in the book is 0 0.03538. So those two are very close. Now we are ready to calculate the uh, rank by serial coefficient because we know all the values we need to complete this formula. So I'm going to do this and the xp bar is here minus xq bar I have it here and that difference divided by the standard deviation of GPA then I times the uh, proportion of the p group times the proportion of the q group and divide by the ordinate of the cutoff point for the two groups. Now I get a ranked uh, by serial coefficient that is 0.97. Remember the sign of the ranked uh, coefficient depends on which value you put first in this um, subtraction and we go uh, here we can actually tell even though we have a negative sign here it's a positive relationship between the um, a pass fail performance and the um, GPA. So this actually, we should end up report this as a positive correlation, even though we have a negative sign here. We also have this formula to get an uh, approximation of the rank by serial correlation coefficient based on the point by serial correlation coefficient. This value is uh, available in SPSS. That's why the book says you can uh, get approximation use this formula. I just want to show you here if uh, you're going to do that, what you will get. Okay, this is the uh, same data set in SPSS. So get the point by serial correlation coefficient between the two variables. You go to correlate by variate. It's nothing special. It's actually just Pearson correlation between the two variables. And you take a look, and the uh, point by serial correlation coefficient 0 0.766 between the two variables. So if we go back to our place, we use this formula, we're going to have a 0.766 times the square root, square root uh, of the uh, product of the two proportions, okay, PP times PQ. Then we divide that by the ordinate value. And you end up with a value that's actually a little bit higher than one. 